So I finally got my SIG P365. Uh, in Washington last year, they passed a law where even though I've been background checked a million times, I have my concealed pistol license, I've been fingerprinted, I have to wait to get any sort of firearm. So yay, Washington. Anyway, I got what's called a TAC pack. The TAC pack comes with three 12 round magazines. And I ended up buying a 10 round magazine just because I wanted to test it out. It comes with a holster from SIG. It has uh, these attachments here or it has these belt loop attachments. Some lube, a chamber flag, directions, and a Allen wrench to adjust the retention on your holster. So the 12 round magazines are pretty nice. It fits my hand pretty good. See that there? But I have small hands, so the gun fits pretty nice as well. This is how I normally grip it. I ride the slide like that, high up. Never had a slide bite my hand yet. The 10 rounder is a little bit smaller. You can see it just goes right into the palm of my hand right there. I believe it grabs onto your pants like that. Have your belt secured so you can't actually pull up. So it locks. And again, it does have the retention. You can adjust it, but I like pretty tight retention on my holsters. What I also noticed too is with the 12 and the 10, they really minimize the size of the magazine. So it was extremely difficult to actually put the 12th and the 10th bullet in the magazine. It also makes it really difficult to rack the slide when they're loaded to capacity. And I don't know if that's gonna change uh, the more times you shoot it, the more times you actually reload the magazine, but you might have a little bit of difficulty uh, racking the slide when you're at uh, 12 and 10. So my suggestion would be if you can't, download your magazine, rack one into the, sl uh, into the gun, and then reload your magazines to make sure that there's, you know, full, full capacity in there. So with this model, I do have an external safety. It's an ambi safety right here. You can't engage it when the slide's not racked. It's empty. So safety on, safety off. Uh, personally for me, I don't, uh, I conceal with around in the chamber and safety off. Uh, I also want to focus on the trigger here. I'll show you how long of a trigger pull actually is because I feel with, uh, for me personally, my finger is the safety. So uh, that's why I don't uh, engage it. But I like to check the gun to make sure that the safety is actually working. So we're going to test that now. And in the sake of ammo shortage, I'm only going to shoot like one or two. <laughs> All right, so again, this is, it's, it's 12, so it's difficult. Even I have an issue with it. Okay, so safety on. We're going to see if it goes off. Nada. Okay, safety off. There you go. 
All right, another thing that I mentioned too that I wanted to show you is the trigger pull. Like I said, I don't carry with the safety on, but this has an extremely long and heavy trigger pull. I'll test that when I go inside. So charge, it's empty, and I'll just show you how long it takes to pull the trigger. So right there. We'll do that, uh, I'll do that single-handedly slow firing one shot, just so you can see. All right, ready? So obviously concealing, carrying, and with the safety on or off is gonna be personal preference. You also wanna test your trigger. You wanna be comfortable with it, which is why I always recommend, you know, shooting the gun first. Another thing what you can do for reset is pull the trigger. So what I like to do is I like to find the wall, which is where it stops and then goes click. So this is like what? One, two, three, and then I find the wall, click. So when you have the trigger pulled, rack it, and then release slowly and right there that's your reset on average i'm getting about a five pound almost six pound trigger pull Another thing I like to do with concealed carry is run some critical defense or self-defense ammo through your gun. You want to make sure it runs because that's the ammo you're using. You want to get a feel for it. Um, I don't expect the recoil to be much different, but I do like to test it. So here's some critical defense and we're going to see. Again, in the light of ammo shortage, I'm just going to fire a couple shots. In this slow motion video, I'm shooting regular factory ammo. In this slow motion video, I'm showing critical defense ammo. When I shot this, it seemed to me that the recoil was the same between regular ammo and self-defense ammo. In general, it's a smaller handgun, so it's a little snappy. What's also pretty cool about this gun is the sights. So you can see here the front and the back sight, and they are actually glow in the dark sights, as you can see right here. All right, so you lock it back. This rotates down. And should just come off, right? It's lubed. There we go. 
Well, okay. You're hot and ready to go.